Welcome to Stuff Weekly, your weekly update about the Stuff ecosystem. Announcements, new releases, price action, all the info in one video. And we are live! Stuff.io officially launched on June 13th. Here you can see the website. Uh, looks quite different from the book one, uh, but I love this, this thing on top where they show you how easy it is to, to watch something, open the app, and, and so on. And I'm gonna start with that. It's, it's kind of already a fringe conspiracy theory type of thing, but you see here, actually exactly here, I cannot pause it, but you see, it's playing a song. It's called Fumble the Bag by uh, Yarin Primak. And uh, it's a song. And there is no song that has been released so far. But we can see here in the prototype that uh, there is something. So is it the first artist? Did we already get a hint of what's to come? Um, I googled the, the artist and I found his um, Spotify page. So you see 150,000 monthly listeners with most popular song with more than 1.5 million listens. So I saw Snoop Dogg, sure. <laughs> But still, uh, it is no slouch neither. So already in this uh, introduction that, that we see here, they show you the video, they show you music, they show you books. It is all coming together. Stuff that you own. And so the website is here. You can download the apps uh, on top. You have the link to the white paper, to your library. And uh, at the same time, they released the Genesis asset, which you can see here. I'm gonna turn off the sound. And so the first episode of About Stuff, or episode zero, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so uh, it's a 35 minute video about the behind the scenes of stuff.io. Basically, they put GoPros and microphones everywhere in the office and they were spying on people. I mean, kind of. Uh, and also they have some kind of um, confessional type of uh, segments where you can meet uh, you know, different people from the team and, and hear their thoughts. It's very interesting to get a glimpse of what's behind the scene and get to know the team on a more personal level, in a sense. You see how good those people are and how smart they are. It's like super transparent. I mean, probably it's edited and so on, but uh, it feels good to be you know, together with them. And people who were at the book con, I'm sure they experienced that when they stopped by and uh, they talked with members of the team. They realized what kind of people they were uh, and uh, you know, whether they are able to achieve their vision or not. The whole episode is black and white. I'm not sure why. Some people say that maybe it's a matter of um, video size. I'm not sure. This can be streamed up to uh, 1080p, so it's a uh, high definition. You can see maybe there's some kind of noise. I think if it's just the GoPro, that's how it is. But if you record all day, uh, it's gonna take a lot of, uh, of memory. That's my guess. So. First episode, pretty cool, more to come. And uh, as I said, it, this is a Genesis asset. It's the Bible of stuff.io. And something incredible happened is that they sold out 10,000 NFTs, which were priced at 180 ADA public price, 99 ADA OG price. You had the OG price if you had a Bible. Selling 10,000 NFTs, in around three hours in the current market, that's crazy. It's, they probably made like the 1 million ADA in three hours. So, you know, uh, hat off to, <laughs> to the um, stuff team for pulling that off. It's the result of years of work on book.io showing that they can deliver and more, impo more importantly, that they take care of their holders. Um, Maybe I can retrieve a tweet from, um, uh, who was it? It was Andrew, I believe. Uh, 
what he explains yes here the value of a good so this was posted uh, when i'm not so sure but a couple of months back and basically he calculated that um, everything that the goods granted you is the equivalent of almost 4000 usd so a lot of value was delivered during two years for good holders and uh, people have similar expectations with the stuff.io the about stuff asset so it will be interesting to see how those two interact the team did say that the Gutenberg Bible would be would always be the first DEA so in a sense it's the most OG of the two uh, nonetheless stuff.io will have very different types of media and uh, I'm sure the about stuff video will be uh, will be leveraged there to give some uh, some benefits actually if we go to to the website and we check the about stuff page we see here included utility free future content so select future episodes and extra contents uh, discounts on purchasing future episodes and extra content exclusive access uh, so basically some kind of white list to to buy more episodes and extra content and uh, social access uh, access a social channel dedicated to the about stuff video episodes not sure if that will be discord or not if it's just the og book club which might be renamed og club uh, now that we have two uh, two genesis assets so not sure about the social access uh, but basically free stuff and uh, well if we go to jpeg store you can see uh, around 3% listed and a floor of 185 so it was 99 ADA the discount price so basically a 2x 2x uh, not too shabby for such a huge collection for a long time it was just 1% listed looks like people are maybe losing patience some of them which is really funny because stuff is just getting started and look at the bible everything that happened um, so basically the Bible is now like 1.3k so I don't see why stuff.io like the about stuff Genesis asset why wouldn't that one uh, get there with time uh, especially that I have this conviction that uh, uh, stuff.io will make it much easier to onboard people because um, well you have podcasts you have video content creators and a lot of those are in the crypto space and have large audiences so it will be very easy for them to tell their audience hey no download my new podcast for I don't know, one or two ada or on book.io or five ada whatever because they're, they're gonna talk to an audience which is already crypto savvy whereas books like the audience not so much at least from what i've seen so far there were some people like Jack Fricks, um, who is uh, a f let's say a prominent figure of crypto, I mean Cardano specifically. So of course his audience was crypto, but generally speaking, books, yeah, we don't have that many about about crypto. It's not the the uh, the most common media type to communicate on this topic. So that's why I think stuff in terms of onboarding uh, will be much faster than than book. And especially that it benefits from the foundations that book put so the the reputation but also the technical aspects like the apps are already there you can already download the uh, the apps it's here on top uh, you can already download the apps ios android okay uh, yeah here like this uh, there's a little issue on Android at the moment that the about the video is not showing but the team is on it so I'm sure it's just a matter of, uh, of days to get that fixed and the last thing that uh, I want to mention about about stuff is that they also released on base and um, on base 
it was a fungible token, so kind of like the, the beard one. So you could buy... Uh, so it's a, it's like a standard edition, basically it's always the same cover. And uh, you could buy the equivalent of one, five, fifty, five hundred, five thousand dollars, I believe. And so you could see 437 million assets uh, spread between 149 holders. I suspect here we have a lot of, uh, of OGs from the Cardano community. And then if we look at the, the quantities, so the 10 million here, this is $500. So I have 10 million here, here someone put $1,000. Uh, so there are some good amounts in there. Some people went in uh, quite heavy or 69 millions. So wow, that's, that's a lot of, uh, of dollars in there. Uh, 20 millions and so on. So people who really believe and uh, here there's something that is also important is that even though this is a fungible token, it is also the Genesis token, but for the base chain. And uh, here it's, I mean, we know that this token will provide benefits for the base chain. Uh, but then there's kind of a question mark of how it's going to look like because Base is great uh, in the sense that we can create a lot of NFTs for cheap and um, transaction fees are cheap as well. Also, it's a centralized chain, so it may be good for um, everyday people who are not into crypto that you know they're gonna trust Coinbase with their assets. Uh, but then the question is, okay, do you, do you need the base Genesis, Genesis asset to get discounts on base? And you know, you paid your card and one more than that, and you're not getting uh, you know, discounts on, on base assets. I mean, cross-chain discounts is something that hasn't been solved yet, but I think it's not gonna be so long because you have the discounts on Cardano at the moment because the minting engine and the payment engine are different and because you are able to check what you have in your wallet before you buy something. And uh, being able to link multiple wallets to the same account, multiple wallets from different blo blockchains, is a thing. If you redeemed uh, Brave New World on Algorand, you have an Algorand wallet linked to your user account. So there is a world where you have different wallets linked to your account and stuff would be able to read whichever wallet to apply whichever discount. Uh, so theoretically, it's doable. Technically, probably too. It's just it hasn't been developed. And this is something that uh, I have a bit in the back of my mind that you know, will Cardano be only um, I don't know, collector editions of stuff? Will, it, will we have all assets both on base and Cardano? So if you have the Cardano Genesis asset, you can, you know, uh, get a discount or something. Uh, I'm curious to see how it's gonna pan out. That being said, they always did right by their holders. So I have zero doubt that, um, you know, people who did buy the Cardano Genesis asset will also have a ton of benefits out of it. My only question mark is, will the Cardano Genesis asset provide discounts and advantages on base chain, where I suspect that a lot of material may end up on base. Just a suspicion doesn't mean it's going to be like that. Just personal opinion. Okay, so to sum up this uh, segment of the video, yeah, big, big success of the, the stuff launch with the new website, the first episode, 10K collection sold out in three hours. Um, the apps are out, people can watch. And uh, wow, it's going well on secondary too. So very strong start. And now we're gonna take a step back and talk about the white paper of stuff. The Stuff white paper was released, uh, I think, two days before the, the website, so on June 11th. And look at those numbers. The, 
the white paper was what 99 ADA, I I think, and the floor is 755 for a white paper that has quote unquote no announced utility. It it was a marketing uh, stroke of genius right in there. The book team or staff team, they always provided value to uh, to the whole community. And the one asset where they say that there's no utility, I mean, no announced utility. Um, also in the newsletter, they said no utility yet. Uh, but yeah, the one asset where you cannot do anything but read it. And actually you can go to Medium and read the white paper for free. So the one asset that has nothing in it, like the price skyrockets on pure speculation. Like it was, to be honest, unexpected. I thought that, I, rather, I didn't think that people would take the risk, but oh boy, was I wrong. So you can see uh, if you held onto your white paper with no announced utility, uh, you made like a 7X. Yeah, so congratulations. Uh, I sold mine for like 200 ADA. Um, I bought two, sold one, so you know, I recouped my uh, investment. So I'm good. Uh, look at this art, it looks really cool. Uh, props to, to the art team for pulling that out. You no know, different styles of this uh, stuff logo. It's very uh, artsy. Like I could see that in, a, in an office or hotel, or waiting room, something like this. And it was only 500 NFTs and 13, just 13 are still listed. 58% unique wallet. That's a nice distribution right there. And so people are gonna hold on to it because they're gonna wait for this not announced utility. So congrats everyone who got on this. Uh, I'm gonna use the opportunity to uh, give a plug to uh, wayup.io, which is a marketplace and a marketplace aggregator from uh, being created by the team at Ada Anvil, known for um, for their minting system, and uh, I want to give them a shout out because okay, this is the one I sold because when the stuff white paper was released, well, JPEG struggled a lot. Like for an hour, it was not on JPEG, couldn't do anything. So I had a look at way up listed it and it sold in five minutes you can see the these are the the listing from jpeg most likely oops didn't manage to, to buy this one <laughs> um, so if you see that jpeg is struggling with something have a look at way up uh, there's also the possibility to migrate your listings from what i've heard from jpeg to way up why would you want to do that because way up, it may be, I don't know if it's just a promotional period or something like that, but they take 2% service fees, probably the same as JPEG, but those 2% are capped at 10 ADA. So, you know, imagine you, you sell something very expensive, like, uh, like a Bible, which is like 1.3K. So if you take 2% uh, of that, it's 26 ADA. So it's not gonna cost you 26, it's gonna cost you 10. If you want to, to save some money, use WayUp. Also, I believe they use the multi-sig transactions, meaning that um, your asset doesn't, uh, doesn't leave your wallet, I believe. When you list it, it's like you sign one part of the transaction and when the buyer signs the other part, then the transaction actually happens. Uh, don't quote me on this. But just want to say, if you see JPEG struggling, check WayUp or always check why up because anyway, it includes JPEG store listings. Good to see some competition in there. Now to get back to the uh, actual white paper. If you've read the book white paper, there's a lot of uh, recycling. A lot of things are the same. Uh, a lot of things is just changing the name of uh, you know, book token for stuff token. So in that sense, a lot of it feels familiar. Nonetheless, there are some differences. 
the way they present the solution, for instance. They talk about real-world digital assets. So there is this narrative of real-world assets, RWAs. So it looks like they are getting on that, in a sense. And um, then what I liked, that is not in the book white paper, is the verified digital origin. This is critical. It's to prove that whichever media you got is uh, the original one. It's very important because we are in a world where it's easy to, to create deep fakes or parodies or in fakes in general, especially with generative AI. Maybe you've seen the Sora uh, engine that allows you to make AI videos. With that in mind, it's important to make sure that what you get, what you're looking at is a real authentic thing. So this is really, really important. Um, but then it's usual. The usual stuff, social fight for professionals, multi-chain, we know all this. Um, what was different are the potential applications with audio music, so music, audio books, podcasts, video content, interestingly VR and AR experiences. I feel it's quite niche, but maybe there's a, there's a use case for that. Text content, so the famous coupons, uh, but also legal tax uh, type of documents. Something that was mentioned during the keynote at the BookCon was personal media. Imagine, instead of putting your stuff on Google Drive, you create your DA, and then only you can access it. I mean, on Google Drive, ideally only you should access it, but it's still a centralized server where Google potentially has access, yes. So, there's also a use case there that instead of uh, no, putting your pictures on Facebook or whatever to share with your close ones while you put them as NFTs, you send them the NFTs, they go to stuff.io and watch them. Uh, I understand it's a lot of steps for uh, everyday individuals, but eventually uh, stuff will get there, it will be very easy to sign up with socials, you know, maybe there's a, a way to create, maybe to send assets to someone. Yeah, that would be cool. Imagine you want to invite someone to stuff.io, you send them some assets and it creates for them a self-directed wallet. So basically they just need to log in with their socials. They already have their library and they can check out everything. That would be cool. And the last thing they touch upon are games. This, uh, there was an X space, and uh, I'll get to it in my next segment. But yeah, they said that it's not gonna happen anytime soon. So they put it here, but as a potential application, but it's it's a bit more complicated, this, this specific industry. Okay, and uh, then here we see the details of the token uh, and specifically the distribution. Oh wait, before that, just confirmation that stuff tokens is used to create DAs. So all creators who will want to be on the platform will need the token. Before it was just offers and publishers, which were the buying pressure. Now it's podcasters, YouTube content creators, whatever. It's a much, much bigger audience. So it's good to get confirmation here. Um, that the token will be needed by every creator. And I'm scrolling down and here we are, uh, the distribution. So, okay, it's here more in details. So year one, the average four hour reward is 23,000 uh, book tokens. If I go, this is the, the book, the book um, white paper. So here, mm -hmm, mm, how many were there? Around 140,000. So it went from 140,000 to 23,000, which is roughly dividing by six the, the rewards. And uh, 
you can see here the distribution curve, uh, release curve. So not so much at the beginning, then it peaks at year 5, and then goes down uh, until year 100. And uh, you can see the more details here. But as they explained in their whiteboard video last time, if you have 1 million people at year 5, and there are 54,000 tokens to earn, then each person will earn 0.054 tokens. Again, if you, uh, if you bought a lot of tokens already, you should be in a pretty good place. And I believe on X, there is uh, also, yes, this uh, post here, where we see the juxtaposition of the release, the token release schedule. So book here, the old read to earn, with a lot of tokens released at first and then goes down and then on. Goes down until basically, yeah, maybe seven, eight. And then, or well, basically like most of it is distributed. And then in green at the bottom, we see consume to earn, which is uh, not as aggressive. And you see the huge difference in that. And this is bullish the distribution will increase with the adoption rate and then slightly go down. And what's funny is that the more, when it's gonna go down after five years or so, you can imagine that you'll have more and more creators. So as the, the token distribution rate goes down, the utility increases because you have even more creators to choose from. Meaning that the, the scarcity will be driven not only by the, uh, the adoption rate, but also the offering on the platform. This is something to, to bear in mind too. To sum up, white paper, pretty similar to the book one, with a few differences if you want to dig into the token calculations and so on. You have everything here. Uh, I'm not good at maths, this means nothing to me. Um, but the white paper is there, they lay out the vision, the problem, the solution, it's a great way if you want to introduce someone to the stuff ecosystem, someone who wants to do their own research, give them the, the white paper, maybe not the NFT when it's almost 800 ADA floor price, but just the link to the Medium article and have them read this is a really high quality document makes you understand the business case and why stuff um, will succeed because they solve real problem that real people have it's not you know, defy for the sake of defy speculation for the sake of speculation whatever no there's a problem that they observed they have the solution they have the contacts in the industry with the big five big investors that are uh, central players in the field, they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it. So, uh, spread the, the good word. On Wednesday, there was an, an impromptu X space with uh, Josh and Ben to talk about stuff and book. I'm gonna give you the cliff notes. Um, so, they're in NYC because they're meeting with BDMI, the um, Battles, the investment arm of the Bertelsmann Group. Bertelsmann, so an investor of book stuff. Multi-billion dollar company, biggest media conglomerate um, in the world. I think 18 billion dollars, something like this. And they own, for instance, BMG. BMG, the record label. They also own Penguin Random House, one of the biggest uh, book publishers. So they were there. For some conference and uh, we didn't get details ben just said that he's very bullish after what he's seen there uh, josh then talked that about the the stuff genesis asset saying that with stuff they are kind of at the same place as where they were when they released the gutenberg bible meaning that uh, it's hard for people to imagine or to understand what stuff is doing uh, because stuff doesn't have you know, sales data like book and things like this. So there's still a lot of work to do to show them the potential 
of stuff. That being said, um, because of well, thanks to the success of book and uh, development on the book side, there are things that they can already show out like credit card payments and uh, social logins. So stuff benefits uh, from the book uh, advancements. Then they talked about what would be the, the first videos. So the first one is this about stuff, Genesis asset. And Josh mentioned that they're not interested in doing public domain videos like Mikey Mouse or some old movies. So I'm not sure. Will be only a lot of about stuff at the beginning until they get more content creators. I don't know. Something that would be cool though is that uh, I'm thinking now you have this project called the El Paso Verse. Uh, I mention it quite often. Uh, the reason I mention it now is because they release their books on Book.io very well. But also they have this project of having the community vote on which books they want to convert uh, to a movie. So they're gonna make movies as well. Um, I'm not sure what's the English term for that, but like movies under an hour. I think around 30 minutes they plan to do. So we could imagine something like that. Who knows, maybe one of the first DAs, sub DAs would be an El Paso Verse movie. That would be a great way to, um, not to tie things together. And it shows the potential of stuff and book ecosystems. That you can have a book and maybe you get an airdrop of the movie version of the book or the audio book. Maybe the original um, kind of uh, soundtrack of uh, of the movie as well. So you could imagine a blend of media types getting together. You have your one account, you get into a book, a movie, and you get this extra content on different um, media media types. So El Paso West would be a, a good candidate for that. Then what else did they mention that, yeah, they had conversations, sorry, with some artists about stuff and they were surprised how much they knew about NFTs and crypto. So maybe, uh, you know, offers, book, uh, they didn't have that many people into it, but maybe with music and videos, like the, the share of creators who are more familiar with crypto is, uh, is bigger. Maybe. What else? They said that they're meeting with uh, one of the big five CEO. They didn't say who. But it was the, the BGMI meeting. So maybe Penguin Random House was there. I know Simon and Chester is also in New York. Maybe that. And we're talking precisely about that. This kind of blended media offering. You buy the, the book. You get the movie, uh, or you can get a discount on the movie because you own the book. Maybe uh, you get a behind the scenes airdrop. There's a lot of overlap between uh, book and stuff. It's going to be very exciting. You're going to connect with creators like like never before. Not just through a video or through a book, but through all those media types and even those uh, clubs, so book clubs where you get a direct access to the creator and be able to interact. It's going to be a much richer experience than what we get now. Then they, someone asked about video games. They're saying that, yeah, they're not going after games at the moment. Um, I didn't really get the reasoning, but it was something about the fact that video games are usually confined to uh, a video game system, like that Sony, uh, Microsoft, Nintendo, and uh, those systems don't talk to each other. So it's for them it's a bit complicated to do. I guess they could just do PC games, but maybe there are issues in terms of licensing. I don't know, but it seemed a bit uh, like a, like a, a tall order at the moment. So it's it's not on the horizon for now. Then there's an interesting point about uh, the self-publishing portal. They're saying that, yes, they work on it, but they get a lot of, um, of chases from offers and, and things like this. And um, they understand, but something that 
people may not have in mind is that they need to put in place guardrails if they do a self-publishing portal. I, I say self-publishing, but it also applies to stuff. Um, well, they need to make sure that the person releasing the content is actually the owner of the rights to the content. So they want to work with uh, digital IDs to be able to identify the person putting out the content and make sure it's correct. The example was that they don't want just a random guy or girl coming in and publish Harry Potter because then the problem, the liability is not on the user, it's on the platform and they can definitely not afford that. So putting in place those guardrails is paramount. And that's why the self publishing portal also takes time. Can you imagine it's much easier to have a publisher portal. So for actual publishers, um, they have this, uh, this Onyx database with all books and audiobooks, all the metadata, you know who owns what. No, it's, um, how to say, a system that is controlled uh, with some oversight. It's much easier to do that rather than opening it to the whole world and you don't know what they're gonna do. Then they touch upon, there's a question about the adult industry, if there were any plans on that. Uh, and funnily enough, they do get a lot of questions from OnlyFans creators. That being said, they have no plans about that. They are not gonna do it. Uh, like it's, it's not even a consideration. They said, if we want to make a lot of money, yeah, sure, but it's about uh, empowering creators and spreading knowledge. And uh, OnlyFans doesn't seem to align with that uh, vision. Then they went on to drop a little bit of alpha that they are in discussions to integrate the... Um, to integrate, sorry, the reader or the the stuff up, I assume, inside the wallet. So you could imagine, like, Eternal has this, I think, that you, you open the app on your phone and you can go to the, the apps and ask, access some of them. So we could do that with uh, a wallet, access maybe, like, watch the video on your, or on your phone just with the, um, with the wallet. It's going to be a good way for people to um, just skip one step. Basically, if you are trading NFTs uh, or on your phone, then instead of downloading one more app and you're connecting the wallet with the app and things like this, just open your wallet. There is the D app integrated and you can uh, access your stuff content. So that's pretty cool. I wonder which wallet is going to be. But I see the point to to help with adoption, even if it's adoption within the crypto ecosystem, it's still good to make it easier for people to uh, to access their assets. Uh, another bit of alpha was that they signed two new publishers. Uh, the press release should go out soon. So one is uh, Abrams. Abrams, they do uh, books, uh, but mainly kids' books, from what I understand. Um, and books, quite like hobby type of uh, uh, type of books. I see some crafts, food and drink, gardening. So okay, good to to get more people on board. And the other one they got is source books. And here you have uh, children, young adults non-fiction, adult fiction, and romance. And apparently they are big, they are big on the romance side. Um, romance is the number one, it's like the best-selling genre in the book industry. So it's good that we're gonna get more of those titles. I know they don't sell out always. I'm thinking uh, we had the, how is it called? The Diary of a Kuga or something like this, uh, published recently on book.io. It didn't sell very well. So the crypto bros are not into that, which makes sense. But when book opens up to the whole market and that 
book becomes a normal thing, then those are the types of books that people are gonna want. So maybe there's a point to uh, to get a lot of those, maybe to rent them out or sell them later. NFA, a gamble, but it's something that uh, the people should try and think about is that the way book and stuff are now is not the way it's gonna be one year, two years, five years from now. So you can either play the market as it is now or speculate on what it's gonna be, when it's gonna be massive. So that was good information, always positive to get, uh, to get more content, more publishers on board. I remember this, uh, this post on X by Ben saying that uh, it's gonna be slow and then all at once. And it's exactly that. They get those publishers that don't seem so big. Although I think Sourcebooks is top 20 in the US, so it's, uh, it's not negligible. But basically, we start with more independent offers, then small publishers, then medium publishers. And then we're gonna get the big one, and the big one will come with uh, thousands, dozens of thousands of titles. And then you have the same catalog as Amazon. Except that we have true ownership with it too, and uh, consume to earn, hopefully soon. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. You, have, you can feel this tension, like those little steps, oh, a new a new living offer, or oh, a new publisher, and maybe it's not amazing news it's not big big stuff but it's it's like one more uh you know, drop in the vase until it overflows what else was in that space uh, oh yes we now have josh who is uh, a candidate for the uh, interim constitutional committee on Cardano and uh, I encourage everyone to um, to read about the candidates, read about this big, big moment for Cardano. We're going to move to community governance little by little, meaning that uh, it won't be the, the founding entities who would have a lot of power. It's going to be distributed to the community. And uh, to do that, we need to write a constitution. Cardano is a nation. We need a constitution. What are our values, our principles? And um, some work happened on this already. Now they're going to put in place an interim constitution committee to actually propose the constitution to the community. And then we'll take it from there. So Josh is one of the 22 candidates, I believe. And uh, I'm not going to get into politics. You vote for whoever you want, obviously. Um, what I personally liked about him is that he says in this video that, well, book and stuff rely on Cardano. So he has a personal interest to see Cardano succeed long term. Remember, consume to earn is a hundred year plan. I like that. No, more than principles, uh, you know, principles are good, but what I mean is that when you have a personal stake in a system, then uh, you protect yourself. And in the case of Josh, the ecosystem and the personal search business interests align. So I believe he's going to be a good candidate. I reviewed the 22 of them, voted for free personally, uh, and the quality is really high really really good people from all around the world it's so awesome the cardinal community is so strong such bright and diverse minds whatever happens at the end of this vote we are in good hands and uh, yeah that was mostly what was said during that uh, x space i already talked about the mints today so i'm not gonna get on to them specifically. It was just a stuff white paper and the about stuff Genesis assets. Now to look at the token. On the seven day, we are minus 6%, still holding about 10,000 holders. And it's quite funny because 
this, uh, this green candle here was the whiteboard video. So we went down, then up, whiteboard video plus 10%. Then it, it moves a bit up and down, and then boom, we're back to where we were before the whiteboard video. Um, not sure what's creating that, especially when you see how the NFTs are performing, the, the Genesis, the stuff Genesis assets and the stuff white paper. My guess is, uh, well, ADA went down during that time. Uh, we went from like 44 cents to 41, so it's like almost uh, almost 10 percent less, and maybe that's why the seven day is also minus six percent. This is the book USD chart, so maybe actually it's just you know um, a stable ADA price, but not but not stable USD price. Let's switch to to ADA, so we'll see. Yeah, indeed. You see A down the seven days, it's, uh, it was the same basically. Um, so ADA is, uh, I mean the ADA price was stable, but the USD price of ADA went down. So book is going down with it. Uh, not, uh, not worried in the slightest, still awesome uh, entry point for those who don't have enough. Um, and dare I say, it's only going to get better because one of the first steps with this new stuff token, I mean this renamed book to stuff token, is to be able to use it to buy stuff assets. Once that is in place, then we have a sync, a token sync. So it's not like we're burning the tokens, it's you know, the stuff team getting them or the content creator but uh, there will be a use case and I'm curious to see how um, widespread it's gonna be because on the book side I believe there were around three mints which required the book token so not, not that many I hope it will be more prominent on stuff so we can do something with our tokens and remember you have the, the book pool you have your rewards you have your monthly airdrops with the goods so those kind of extra tokens that you get or that people get i think they will be quite willing to use them it's like getting extra content for free in a sense we'll see what happens next week to me it looks like yeah a good entry point and our stuff will build things and give more use cases for the token and we'll on board more and more creators some of them most likely crypto savvy with their crypto savvy audience then the token uh, buying pressure will increase so not worried in the slightest. test uh, let's just wait and see as always what a week for book and stuff the stuff launch was very very successful i've never seen almost that many new people on discord it was buzzing all the time uh, a lot of hype around that launch selling 10k assets in around three hours is really an accomplishment in that market the genesis stuff asset is holding at 2x the white paper with no announced utility is holding at between 7 and 8x which is crazy. I feel like, is it 2021 again? Um, the apps are out. The potential is humongous on stuff. I insist on that. Uh, so a lot of good things to come. This was a very successful launch. Looking forward to the next assets. Will those be about stuff episodes again? Are we going to get this... Um, uh, this uh, artist, uh, Yarin uh, Primak. We will see. In any case, very, very strong start. It shows that book and stuff are staples of the Cardano ecosystem. Also, uh, this is illustrated by uh, Josh running to be in the interim constitution committee. A lot of things happening, a lot of things to come. 
Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting book and stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.